So the question that one of my loyal, loyal Patreon supporter wanted me to make a video about was how to how to develop a BS detector for men. All right. In other words, how to tell when a guy's BSing you. And I thought that was a good video. So I asked you guys, which one should I make? And you guys decided that was the video that I should make out of all of them. And the real key about developing a BS detector, because look, most guys, most guys, you know, they're, they're, you're going to be able to detect when somebody's lying to you more often than you think. The issue is not about developing a BS detector for a guy. It's about developing a BS detector for yourself. Whenever you're lying to yourself. So the real key isn't about seeing when he's lying to himself. It's about seeing when you're lying to yourself. Because if you really think about it, it's not that hard to tell when a guy's full of shit. And the reason why that is is because when you're devoid, when you're devoid of emotion, and when you take one step back, i.e. taking a break from the guy or observing it in a friend of yours and noticing how your friend is acting super crazy for a guy who doesn't even love her, you're going to be able to tell the, the difference, right? But when you're in it, it's hard. And, and what makes it difficult is the intense emotions you feel. If you're able to become more rational, lower the emotional intensity, you'll be able to think more you'll be able to assess the situation with more clarity. So we're going to learn how to develop that through a few different methods, okay? And um, and don't forget, we're having 40% off all of the courses. So that means 40% off Nice Curl, 40% off the Psychological Game of Attraction, and 40% off the Natural Chemistry. Only this month only, people, okay? This is for the holidays. So use a coupon code, MINDFUL, to get it. And don't... Okay. So the first thing is first, man is that you want to observe, you want to, the first thing is lower expectations. That, that uh, to me, that's a, the most important thing. Because naturally, when you find a potential partner, your mind naturally enhances how things will be in the future. And this enhancement depends on how unhappy you are in the present moment. If you're not happy, the mind will continuously look in the future and look for a, its savior. And a lot of the times, that savior will come in the form of a mental projection. And that mental projection will cause you to create a mental bias where you're not going to let information that will cause this potential future life-saving event to happen in other words you will see signs of narcissism you'll see red flag in a person but because you're so hung up on making this fantasy happen because you believe that's what's going to make you happy that's what we all believe and the way we believe that is by observing what other people say makes them happy you create the stakes become high and it's very important for this to happen and so even if the person is lying to you you're going to hear it but not hear it. You're going to see, but not see, right? So you want to observe yourself wanting to believe a lie. It's a very subtle thing. It's a very subtle thing, right? How do you know if things don't work out? You feel a sense of doom. You feel like, oh my God, my day is ruined. You feel almost like your whole day is ruined. This is what opens up, opens up, opens you up to lies and manipulation where you're so fucking desperate you'll believe anything that and, and that's the real problem is not that the person is a good liar is that you're a good liar to yourself what a you know what does that Alex has a fucking put his finger at us we get it <laughs> right so observe yourself lying to yourself and the way you know that is because when you meet this person you want this to happen so badly when you do that you're just opening up yourself you're it's like having a bad immune system if your immune system is bad you can rest assured that you're gonna get sick if your immune system is this shitty because you just want things to happen so badly you're gonna most likely you've already believed a lie right it's almost like it's almost like um it's almost like when you meet someone and you don't know what, let's just say, God forbid, something bad happens, the earth is destroyed and you only, and there's only a few people left to survive. You meet someone and they're the only person in the world. You have no choice but to trust them, right? It's the same thing. Is that you're so desperate for this to happen. You have this mental projection about how this will make you happy that 
you don't care if he's if, if he or she's lying to you. You just want it to happen, right? And, and that's where the self deception comes in. So what you have to do is lower ex- the next thing is lower expectations. You have to assume that things will not work out the way you want them to. You have to assume that because when you got to realize is that what, what what creates the anxiety is the potential good future that being with this person will be. And that anxiety triggers needy and desperate behavior that pushes them away and that causes you to not be able to discern truth from fact, um, um, lies from truth, right? So you, the way to do that is from the start, when you meet somebody, lower expectations. Say to yourself, it's not going to work out. Say to yourself, this is um, this person will leave after today because especially when you start getting some confirmation, when you meet the person and you're noticing that, that this person likes you, you start getting excited. And when your emotions become inflamed, you begin to, like I always say, you see the world through a squinted gaze of a fog of emotion. It's just, it's just a no pick screen of emotion that causes you to not be able to see the maneuver that people that 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 people are trying to get at you. So you lower those expectations, right? By lowering those expectations, you lie to yourself less because, and I say this, do this in the beginning because it's only easier, it's only, it's better to do it in the beginning, right? Because you're not as emotionally invested and you're going to feel that pull because it's a quick pull. It's like a, it's like a, it's, 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 it's like a, it's like a, a whirlpool where if you're far, you're not going to get in the whirlpool, but there's a certain point. That if you just touch the whirling, all of a sudden, you're going to go in instantly. It's like you're slow, slow, but once you feel that force of the whirlpool, you're instantly in. It's the same thing. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, you know, you, you don't know the person. Okay, okay. Oh, my God, I like this person. Oh, my God, that's it. Like, it, it's, it's like instantaneous, and you want to stop it from the start, right? So that's one thing. Lower expectations. Notice yourself lying to yourself, okay? The next important thing is stop telling yourself what you see. You want to learn to observe people without thinking and interpretation. So what you want to do is develop a mindfulness practice. And this, again, this part of the video is is something that I repeat a lot in my videos. I hope you have not forgotten to notice your breath, right? And the reason why, and the reason why you forget to notice your breath, honestly, is because you're talking to yourself. A lot of the times when you're listening to me, you're, you're, you're telling yourself what you think about this, about what I'm saying. Why I say to notice the breath is because you have two choices. You either feel the hand and listen to me and take everything in or you listen or you listen to your thoughts and listen to what I'm saying and you only take half in because you're listening to your thoughts, right? It's almost like it's almost like if you're watching a movie but you're watching it, it if you're watching a movie but thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow, you're not really watching it because your mind will absorb more of your attention than reality. So you're talking to someone and you're saying how awesome this person is or how sexy this person is or how great this future would be. You're not really paying attention. And people will send you signs of deception. It slips out. It's not easy to continually lie. It's not easy. But And the way you know that is we're going to talk about other ways. But first of all, you get a sense from this person. Something's off. And the only way for you to actually sense it is to become more present. Feel the hand. Observe your reaction. Notice your breath. Take everything away from your thoughts. Don't think when you're listening to people. In fact, try this. When you're listening to me, listen to me in anticipation of what I'm about to say next. Don't assume you're going to know what I'm about to say. Just notice what I'm about to say next, right? It, almost as though you're waiting. Just, just wait for the next word, right? And you'll notice your attention becomes more you listen more, right? Or even better, wait for the next thing that I'm about, say, I'm about to say and just wait for the next movement. I move here, now wait for the next thing that I'm going to do. Don't, ex- don't, en- don't anticipate what I'm going to do. Just wait. Okay, wait for the next thing. Now wait for the next thing. Wait for the next thing. Now wait for the next thing. You're not anticipating. You're, you're at the razor edges. You're, what's next? You're like a you're you're like a spider sensing the vibration of of, of its web. You're just waiting, 
you're not anticipating. You're not you're not expecting what you, what I'm about to say. You wait. So for example, it's like I know that if I look this way, there's a wall. Wall. That's one thing. But if I look this way, not just don't expect the wall. Even though I know the wall is not is is not is there, but I just don't expect it. Oh, wall. I I look without expecting the wall, and I'm like, oh, it's the wall. It's the same thing. So when you're listening to people, don't wait. Don't listen through through just like listening. Listen at the razor edges. What are they gonna say next? And what you'll notice is that you'll start seeing even subtler things. Where you'll notice what I'm saying, but you'll start noticing little twitches. Just little movements you just wouldn't expect. And you'll, you'll even get a feel of inconsistency. You'll get a, a bullshit. You'll notice when someone's lying to you because it just doesn't feel right. As long as you remain present, notice the breath, feel the body, feel the hand, notice the, re notice the environment. Wait in anticipation of about what's going to happen the next second and then the next second and the next second. You're going to take all this in. You're, you're, you're so in reality that everything you take it in. I know I'm looking crazy, but it's because I'm passionate about this. Right? And so it's this is not a thought. It's a feeling. It's a feeling in your gut. You're going to feel like something is off. That's how you really sense people. Now, the next thing I want you to do is once you open up your apertures to be able to take everything what somebody's saying, what you'll notice is funny. Like when I do five-hour meditations, I don't do it by myself. I do it in a group. But when I do five-hour meditations, it's almost like every everything is amplified. I notice you blinking. I notice you little. I notice little twitches. It's almost like when the present, the more present you become. The more you notice, and not noticing in an overwhelming way, like when your computer is processing too much information and it gets hot and overheated. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the type of, of, of taking everything in where, where you're just so present, so alive. Everything is so alive that you take everything in with no stress, no filters, no... Because if you really think about it, the, this, the amount of RAM you're wasting thinking on thinking, because you're overthinking, is the same amount of RAM, RAM, mental RAM, you're going to take in observing the world. Specifically, the psychological game of attraction. This course is, no, natural chemistry. This course is a course specifically made for women who are in relationships and want to improve on the relationship they already have. Um, it's 20% off, so it'll come down to you for um, 70, 70 bucks, I believe. Right, 75, I don't know, right? But in this is a five-week course where I will teach you all of the strategies to maintain a happy relationship. And this is pretty much based on the advice I've given and the feedback that I've gotten and based on research, okay? This is not just me being willingly assuming. This is based on what I've seen. That's why I haven't made a marriage course, people, all right? I mean, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, that's, so this one's for women who are in relationships. This one is for women who are single. I will teach you the playbook. That goes from the first time you meet to the third month, right? Because usually somebody should love you by the third month, all right? So this course will take you through that phrase, and it will help you identify whether or not this person likes you, right? So we have three phases. The first one is we talk about the psychology of attraction. After that, we talk about the pre-honeymoon period when you start creating the interest. The honeymoon period where you solidify that interest. And the post-honeymoon period which is naturally when people lose the game and when naturally most relationships end. But I will teach you, so you you will learn to identify what part of the relationship you're in, either you're in a honeymoon period, post-honeymoon period, or the or the pre-honeymoon period. And each video, each, each, each section has a video specifically for that period. Honestly, it, it, it's, it's a course that would, it's like getting coached by me, right? Click on the description down below. And if you don't like it, you could ask for your money back. 30-day money back guarantee. All right? Okay, I'll see you guys inside. Look, I, I, I already made the video, but I wanted to edit this part in because it's so exciting. Look, first things first. People are who they really show you in real life, especially when you meet somebody for romantic interest, right? People who will tell you that. People will tell you that, that that's why it's better to, to, to get to know people as friends first and then date them. So no one really speaks their mind fully. There's a reason for this. We need to learn to be polite. So learn to play your role and don't be so goddamn honest to everyone every time, right? Because you don't know where they stand initially. So you want to lean back because sometimes people want to hear what you have to say 
find out what you want and tell you what you want in order to to manipulate you even further because when you feel that this person wants what you want your guard goes down and you stop looking for deception so that's one thing you have to understand and the next thing i want you to understand is looking for you want to look for deception cues and let me show you what they are right one humans are natural gullible creatures best way to deal with this is to learn how to de detect them, right? So signs of extra friendliness and attention and warmth to lower your defects, defenses is one thing that they'll do. They'll be extra warm, extra polite. They'll go out of the way, right? Um, like when you lie, you show extra effort and intense level of denial, right? So when somebody's lying, they show they show intense effort to say the truth and intense denial, right? So, and another thing is that they have changing expressions with large smiles, but tension in their face. So they'll smile, but they'll, there'll be tension in the face, right? So you'll get that smile where, <laughs> and it's not there. And the way to know it was a fake smile is because they go to that instantly. They go from smiling to, and they go back to it instantly, right? So that's one thing, right? Now, what do you do when somebody's lying to you? Don't confront them and let them talk and hang themselves. Don't confront them. Just let them keep talking and hang themselves. Once comfortable, ask them a question that shows that you're onto them and look deeply um, in their face for micro, micro expression. If lying, they'll have a freeze up response, right? And, I, and I, I've seen that many times when you catch people lying and they freeze up. Their words and thoughts are not aligned. Also, keep in mind that there is a scale to lies. Don't try to find every single lie. We need white lies to, to survive. Someone who says the truth all the time is pretty much a fool, right? So it's kind of like society functions in white lies. Uh, that's, that's just a fact, right? So you got to learn when to lie. And you got to learn, like I said, like I'm going to say in the video, is when people lie to you, there's some times when you got to accept certain lies, right? That, that, that's just life. And also, you got to lie about certain things as well. Like, for example, if you're a woman and you're dating a guy and he has a small dick, you, you, you can't tell him he has a small dick. You got to lie to him. Like, <laughs> like seriously. Anyways, let's continue. And now, look, there are things that guys will lie to you about that you should just accept. Guys will lie about how many women they've been. Guys will lie about their dick size. Guys will always be extra generous with their height. If they're really 5'11", they'll say 6 foot, just round it off. If they're 6 foot, they'll say 6 foot. There are just some things that guys will lie about. Um, but there are some things you just cannot accept, right? For example, how much debt the guy has. That's important. You can't, if, if they lie about that, that's humongous, right? Um, if they lie about having a family, their relationship statuses, right? All of those things you want to be aware of. But the whole point is that you want to remain skeptical. Now, if you're somebody that's naturally skeptical, don't apply this advice. You need to trust people, all right? But this is more towards people who are just nice girls who believe everything people tell them because they're good people. They wouldn't expect somebody, they don't lie, and so they wouldn't expect somebody to lie as well. So this is more for people who have, who are just nice people and who are, who are not, who have a, more of like an idealistic perspective. Because look, I don't know if you guys noticed about me, but I used to be an idealist, right? Like I used to think that everyone was good. I used to think that nobody was evil, right? It, it was only few people that were evil. Um, and so I don't come about it from that someone, someone who's naturally mean, right? But the thing is, is that it's true. People are slippery. Um, the masks, people wear masks, and it's it's on you to believe that mask. It's not hard to tell the, when they're lying, right? Look, one of the ways to tell if somebody's lying is just if they look too perfect, right? And if they and, and if they support the right causes consistently, anybody that's supporting causes that are socially acceptable and, and it's almost like they follow it to a T. It's almost like there's no deviation. There's no controversy. It's all hit. This person follows the line um, or or better yet, like, yeah, that's one thing. Politics, following the line, um, appearing too perfect is a big one, right? Um, anytime somebody looks too perfect, you got to realize that there's something behind. Anytime somebody looks too happy, on the outside, a lot of the times it's because they're deeply depressed, right? Like anybody, anytime somebody is is always showing photos with them and their friends, it's because deep down they still feel lonely. You could look for the opposite of what a person is by just looking at the extreme that they portray on the outside, not things that are natural, right? Like for example, if the person's rich and they don't go too far to show that they're rich, right? That's not a bad thing. 
But if person is is rich and is, and is going a the extra mile to show how rich they are, you could always assume that this person has has an inferiority complex. For example, like yesterday, I was I was in the train, and there was this one guy following this woman, and and he wasn't following her, but she she switched train tracks, and the guy came back on that train track on the on, on the other bus, like you know the train right one bus the other bus another bus train right she was here and then she moved here and then the guy went over there and he was like hey man i'm not fucking following you i'm not gonna want you man like i'm and she you could tell she was scared and i know some of the things in psychology is that when things like that happen make eye contact with men and the men will automatically know that we're we're together like making eye contact in those moments puts people like in okay if some shit goes down like making eye contact for the future. So if somebody is abusing you in the streets, just make eye contact with someone and they'll be more willing to help as opposed to them not helping. So he was like, hey man, blah, 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 you bunch of bitches. None of you guys are willing to do something. Who's willing to step up? And me and this, uh, I picked the biggest motherfucking black guy in the, in the bus. I looked at him. We looked at each other. We nodded. And so we were like, okay, if shit goes down, we'll try to help, right? Um... Anyway, so he didn't do nothing. I got off the train. He got off the train when I got off. And he was like, man, my, hey, who's the bitch? And they say, I'm the bitch. All you guys are bitches. There you see it. There you see the core problem. This guy has felt the emasculated his whole life. In fact, in the whole in the talk, he was like, man, I'm doing good for myself. And but all you guys are bitches. Here I am. I just came from an interview. It went well. I'm like, okay, all right. This dude's trying to do well for himself, but it's not like, dude, why you got to be terrorizing this whole train and shit? But it's interesting though, right? Like I, I, like, I was listening to this, but I didn't focus on the outside. One, because he didn't hit the woman, but also because I just wanted to observe. And it's that this person most likely has never felt respect, felt weak, um, felt vulnerable at one point in his life. And so he lashes out like that. It's very understandable. So that's how you could tell how people are, right? Any extreme on, on the outside is always an indication of the opposite on the inside. And that's how you could tell BS because a lot of times we're just putting smoke screens to the, the void, to hide people from the pain that we feel, right? So that's how you could tell a BS detector. So if you're talking to somebody and they, and they outwardly make a, a conscious effort to show how different they are, look at what they consciously choose to exemplify how different they are and assume it's the opposite, right? It, it just assume it's the opposite. You could be proven wrong, but that's a safer educated guess than the, than the other of just believing everything you see, right? So it's almost like you got to be a little skeptical with people. People are very deceptive. They're very slippery. Um, it's unconscious and it's conscious in some. Um, but don't go in it like having expectations and holding on to it. If you think this person is wrong, is, is, is amazing, ask yourself, am I wrong? And look for evidence that opposes it. And if you don't find the evidence that opposes it, then maybe he's a good person. Maybe she's a good person. But don't just assume everything you see. So that's one thing, right? I'll open up the ap your apertures of life and take more in. Stop saying what you see and just see. You see, your eyes have, more, have neurons that tell your brain what it's seeing. So you could be seeing somebody that's, good, that's ugly and because maybe you don't consider yourself as attractive because studies show that when you the, the less attract I know it sounds mean people but I'm sorry but if you're at a, if you, the less attractive you feel the more attractive you find people at your level right and so it's almost like it's almost like the brain is saying okay man we can't get them so let's change the way this person sees attractive and make those people attractive right and so your brain will say that's attractive it's almost like when when you, I I was poor when I was younger like the what we had wasn't that good the food right but I still liked it I loved it. Why? Because it was all I had, right? So it's the same. So it's, it's almost like it's almost like your brain will tell you what's good, even though what you're eating might not be good, right? So it's the same thing. You got to watch out for how your brain creates those types of illusions. So the next thing is, which is really important, is accept accepting inconsistencies, right? Um, when you accept inconsistencies, you're pretty much opening yourself up to, to bullshit, Right now, with friends, I'll be a little bit more lenient. For example, I had a friend who was supposed to play basketball. He'll say he'll come after he's done Christmas shopping. We were all playing ball. He didn't show up. Well, we didn't go like, "Hey, what the fuck? Where were you?" Right? With friends, you kind of like a little bit more 
you know, you, you're more loosey about it. But with rom- romantic partners, inconsistencies are unacceptable. Consistent inconsistencies are unacceptable. And when you accept inconsistencies, that's how you know you're lying to yourself. That's how you know that you're in a place where you want things to happen so badly that you're willing to deceive yourself. Are you aware of your breath? Don't let the world absorb all of your attention. I know you watch this channel for dating advice. My passion in life is to bring you happiness through mindfulness. All right? So please, observe your breath while you watch this video. So don't accept inconsistencies. All right? Now, other things, another thing that you want to do is prefer to date people within your social circle. And the reason why is because you're going to have a better grasp on this person's past. That's like the whole reason why you want to um, you want to meet him outside of like dating apps because you know the people that know him and you'll get a better picture. You'll know his exes. You'll know who he dated. You'll know the shit that he pulled. You you're just gonna get a better picture, and so naturally it's gonna be less. It's gonna be harder for you to to deceive yourself and for him to lie to you. So thank you for all the Patreon supporters for asking me this question. If you guys want to ask me questions like this, where I make videos about it like this, um, it's it's a way that, it sh- I, um, you know, it's kind of like you guys also own this channel. I make a lot of free content for you guys. <laughs> out of all the coaches, I put, I put out the most free content because deep down, I really want to help. I mean, I, I, don't, know, I don't know how else to express it. Um, but, you know, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. So if you guys want to support the channel, you guys can become Patreon supporters. Oh shit, people, the battery died. Let me, let me just put the normal battery. People, somebody somebody said like, I don't like the channel sometimes because sometimes the battery dies. And I'm like, yo, that was only one time. <laughs> like only one time the battery died. And this is actually the second time when the battery dies. So I'm sorry about that. But yeah, if you guys want to become Patreon, <laughs> I know, yeah, there is a box, people. <laughs> if you guys want to become Patreon supporters, um, where I do monthly Zoom meetings. In fact, I'm, I think I'm doing a Zoom meeting next week, not this week, where I do Zoom meetings and for all the Patreon people, you guys could, and you know, like a Zoom meeting and you guys could talk, get to know me, you guys can do that. And we're having 40% off all of our courses using the coupon code, um, the camera's not there, using the coupon code MINDFUL, all right? Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video and let me know if this make any sense. You see, most of the people who watch my channel are women who have good hearts, who want to help, who want to give unconditionally and want to get in, in, in return. All you ask is unconditional love. But if you're a woman who considers herself a bitch, like an aggressive woman who's super independent, this is not the course for you. OK, I'm just I'm, I'm going to disqualify every woman who who's already who has that quality. And don't. this is only for nice girls. And unfortunately, there are predators out there who sense this goodness in you and try to take advantage of it. They'll disrespect you. They'll test your limits. They know you can't. They know you don't like confrontation, right? They know you don't like you. They know you don't like aggression, and so they take advantage of that fact. And this course is specifically made for those women who get disrespected for being good people, who never get anything in return for the good that they provide. Right. Because a lot of the times you feel like there's nothing you could do. You've done everything, everything. Every time you try to be nice to people, they don't respect you in return. And that disencourages you for being that good person that you actually are. This course allows you to be that nice person and not get played. It'll teach you how to confront disrespect. It'll teach you how to deal with disrespect. And it'll teach you how to send the right signals. In other words, most likely you're sending signs of weaknesses. Signs of uh, signs that you could disrespect me and I, and I won't retaliate. Sometimes the only way to get peace is through is, is through is through the potential of violence. And violence in this case doesn't mean hitting. I mean, he has this. Per, people have to sense that you're willing to fight back. And there are nonverbal cues that you can send to people that disencourage people from t- um, taking advantage of you. So in this course, I will teach you how to identify people's aggression, how to confront people. How to how to deal with passive aggressive people? How to deal with emotional disrespect? How to deal with people disrespecting your time? People disrespecting you in public? People who are trying to attack your reputation and people who are subtly attacking you, right? It'll teach you how to identify signs of weakness in others and in yourself, and it'll teach you how to send signs of strength, 
to avoid any types of attacks on you. And if you don't like this course, and this course is a very quick course because it's only specifically made to teach you how to assert yourself. It's not meant to be a, it's not, it's not meant to be the Bible people, okay? There's 30% off. No, no, there, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, just ask for your money back and I'll give it to you. No questions asked. So go check it out. And also, you could check out the free, um, there's some free videos you could watch just to give it a test. Click, watch it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. But just watch the free video and you let me know. 30 big money bag guarantee. I'll see you guys inside.